The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we are going to take a look at the German DAX, as you can see here. Uh, we're making a pretty nice correction here after making that uh, three drive to a top pattern. But I think what we need to do, given the fact that we're in a Friday like this, is to go down and look at it on an hourly chart. And the reason why is if you'll take a look at it, you see we took out the lows of yesterday by just a little bit and then snapped back. So that could be a very nice 1.27 pop here if it holds. However, there's a lot of things going on, and I do want to share with you a couple of things. One we shared with you earlier uh, this week, and that is the E-mini S&P. As you can see, we're up here where you've got multiple um, 1.27 expansions numbers at 3017. We've been high as 3012 last night. So uh, this is going to be real interesting to see how this unfolds here today as we come through. By the way, we will have the wizard himself on at uh, 930. Norm Winsky will be on. And uh, and he'll be on again also on the 330 section of um, the show today. We'll I'll be setting in uh, for... Uh, Tom O'Brien. I do want to bring. Uh, I have to show you. This is really a beautiful chart here. This is from one of our uh, one of our newer students. I want to get this up here so you can see that he did this himself, and uh, he's been doing it quite a while. Uh, and he finally, uh, this was his aha moment. He really came up here, and uh, you'll be able to see he had a really nice pattern here where the red arrow is. Uh, this is a half hour chart on the S and P, and you can see that D level. That's up pretty much where we are right now. But you had a three-drive pattern, you had an ABCD, and you were at a 78% level and also a 382 retracement. So you had a whole bunch of things saying, yes, this might be a nice place to look at the long side. And, of course, we've had a nice move with the Dow skirting above 27,000 without too much trouble. Uh, as most of you, I've told you before, one of the first things I do in the morning is I turn on Bloomberg to see, uh, you know, the, that the world has not come to an end. And right there on front of the tube this morning was one of our guests, Kyle Cooper of Ion Energy. We've had him on several times, especially during the hurricane season, which starts now. He was on Bloomberg, and then an hour later, I was going through checking some prices on uh, TFN on uh, CNBC, and he was a guest on CNBC at the same time. So we'll have Kyle on next week, and he'll talk to us uh, about the hurricane. We got Hurricane Barry is uh, rocking and rolling down in Louisiana with lots of rain in, in an area that doesn't need any rain, that's for sure. But let's 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 just talk about the hurricane, folks. You know, talking about the possibility of, you know, short supplies and all this stuff. Look look what's happening here to the uh, to the crude oil, folks. We're we're right at a six a seventy eight percent retracement from the high in May. We're at a sixty one percent retracement from the high in April. We haven't been able to bust above sixty one hundred. The high has been sixty eighty, and this is the midst of terrible weather and all kinds of reports about coming shortages and stuff. Something's not right with this picture, folks. The news is not uh, pushing this market higher, so it's either either fake news or maybe it's not going to be nearly as bad as storm i don't know but keep in mind that uh you see a lot of that and we saw some of that yesterday during the grain report if you remember we were uh, waiting for the grain report to come out and we had a real interesting uh reaction to it and we were saying that we were very bullish wheat if you'll remember you know we've been down here for two weeks setting right at the 382 level in the wheat market, and ev all the most of the major houses, uh, the grain houses, were actually quite negative to the wheat. And you can see we had a, a 26 cent rally in wheat that's continuing on today. Another rally in corn, another rally in beans, and uh, so there's wet weather still out there. And now the weather's getting hot, so it's going to be uh, going to be a rock and roll summer here in the grains, I'm sure. But this wheat sure looks good as long as we can stay above 505. Uh, in the July wheat, you could do September. We're in the well. We're in the 
uh, almost into delivery now in July, but we've got September and December out there acting pretty much the same way. So uh, these grains look like they could have legs and go uh, a lot farther. Mr. Z here in the den has certainly been keeping us alert to, you know, really cool spots to get long, and he's certainly on top of this one, which he usually is, and that's why he is the master. Okay, let's take a couple of quick things that uh, we really need to get done that I think are relatively important, um, you know, for the future of what we're looking at on some of these trades. And one of them, of course, is the uh, cotton. And uh, the cotton has not acted well, folks. Uh, we, we are officially going to rule cotton. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Let me get this up here a little bit. When I press the wrong button, this is what happened. The Dease cotton, we were looking at it here at this 63, uh, 30 level. Uh, we haven't broke below 63 yet, but uh, we're officially going to take a $100 loss on this. Uh, because we're on a Friday and in a down in a down week, so we'll look to buy it again on Monday. But I don't want to go through a weekend uh, long cotton uh, because a I don't like cotton that much <laughs> as as far as trading, and I've got so many other things that are doing okay that I I don't want to mess with that. And speaking of that, um, the Treasury bonds uh, have had a nice move. We're down more than four and a half points now, folks. If you're in that trade, uh, you should have about a four-point profit in it. And we're setting right at the 382 retracement now in the uh, in the old bondolis. So that's usually the first correction that you'll get when you're when you're in these things. So pay uh, pay close attention to it. Let's just take a quick look at it, and I'll let you see, you know, what we're watching here. You'll be able to see uh, there's the 382 comes in at 153.03, and we got to 152.28 last night. So this is a pretty good correction that we've had here. If you go back to look at the March to April, those are equal corrections, folks. We came down five handles in the uh, March to April. We're four and three quarters handles down in the uh, the one we're having here uh, in uh, June, July. So this should be it. Folks, anything below 52, uh, there's going to be uh, trouble in River City on the long side of these bonds, I can tell you this. There's already trouble in River City. They just don't see it. Uh, the open interest, what do you think open interest has been doing on this down move, folks? Hello, we're going to have a little quiz here, a little pop quiz. What do you think it's going to be doing? Well, it's been rising. And if we take a look at the old gauge here of what happens when you have rising interest rates, right? Right, rising interest rates, okay, and rising open interest. The market is strong, but the problem is it's strong to the downside. The, the shorts are in control. So that's it. That's why you want to keep watching it. Anyway, we'll watch that. Now, natural gas looks really good, Tucker. I really, I really like the natural gas. In fact, one of the things I'm going to do is to start a program for a long-term view of natural gas. This is this we've, we've, we got up to the one, uh, 249 level here, and let's just get this to show you where we are here uh, in the natural gas. This is the weekly chart, of course. But uh, I get too excited on these things. God. Well, I guess that's good. At my age, nothing else excites me. Still like young girls. I just don't remember why. Look at natural gas here on the weekly, folks. We're up here. We're getting ready to make a move. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $197 a month with the risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, we're going to take a look here at the four-hour chart on gold. It gives us the last four months, and as you can see, that pattern that we have up here is the 135 pattern with the lower tops. The last high crest that we had was exact 786 at uh, 1429.10, and now it looks like we still got a chance to get down here to this 1380 level. We're trading at 1409 last night. Right, right now, we got down to 1404. But and we rally back. Uh, I believe we're tr yeah we're trading around 1409 right now. But I still think we have a chance to get down here to this 1480 level. Any move above 1429 is going to put this market in uh, first gear, and it's going to be off to the races in my opinion because it's still bullish. Folks, stop and think. Honey. If we want, we went from 1256 up to 1441, and that was back on uh, June the 12th. And then we've been going sideways for a month uh, with a total down move of about 60 bucks. <laughs> this is flat out bullish. Uh, I mean, you don't want to mess with this one. This is uh, this looks like the S and P, you know, back in uh, 2016 when it uh, made a bottom and then took off. So this is nothing bearish about this uh, about this chart. I'd love to see it back off one more time to this uh, 1380 level, which would be the 382. I'm not even going to worry about that ABC at 1376. I'm just going to go for it because it looks uh, pretty interesting. So uh, Marshall's asking a question. The silver really doesn't really do very much here. Hey, we got a caller on the line. Shut the front door. Mr. Z, what's up, buddy? Uh-oh, haven't paid the phone bill, Good. I guess. Good hey, morning, Larry. Good morning, my friend. What, what can I do for you today? Say uh, I'm uh, in excuse me I'm in the Tiger's Den mm -hmm. so I see the uh, the questions coming in for you mm -hmm. and I'll keep it brief so uh, you have uh, I don't interfere with your uh, 
interview with Norm Winsky upcoming. But Marshall was curious about the British pound, uh, as am I. Uh, Larry, uh, very specific question is this. You, are, you laid out yesterday and the past days the low-risk uh, buy pattern that you observe. Uh, so we all know that. Uh, the British pound is currently 125.40. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is this, in your conversations with your colleagues, former students, what have you, over in the UK and the continent, uh, are you hearing from them reasons why uh, this pullback in the British pound back to the December 18 lows and we're, we're back very close, Larry, to the January of 17 lows mm -hmm. with some resolution of uh, the Brexit topic going to occur either by Halloween, maybe a little bit before, maybe, maybe after. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing reasons uh, from them why this price, 125 is forming a major bottom with con with conceivably a rally to the 135 145 level coming and if you're hearing that why please well I, they really don't talk too much about the currency rates over there the cross rates john they tell me more or less what's happening in the banking industry with many of the banks leaving you know canary wharf and stuff and uh you know deutsche bank having troubles and stuff like that but as far as the overall picture of the British pound, they really don't uh, really don't talk about it. Now, what, back in, in June of a couple of years ago, when Brexit was going on, yes, uh, the pound was 150. We went from 150 down to 119. They were talking about it now, but you know, over the past year, we've been from 125 up to what 132, and it's just stayed in here. So not really much has been said about it. But this level that you just mentioned, at this 120, uh, 124.50. Uh, 124.40 that we made last January, and again, we made a lower low by one tick last week. Uh, that's a very important level. We've only been able to rally a full point. Now, that might be a bottom, but, you know, the only a one point off the bottom after a whole week is certainly not very much. You know, you'd like to see it if you're long, which we are. You'd like to see it uh, more, but the good part is you put your stop at break even now, and if it gets back down there again, you're going to be out, and you don't have anything at risk, and you're in a home, you know, in a risk-free trade. So that's the only way that I can look at this that gives me any type of uh, protection. And uh, frankly, John, you know me really well, and I don't know diddly squat about the fundamentals. I mean, I <laughs> they can do they can talk to me all day about this stuff, and it goes over my head, which that's where I want it to go. I want it to go over my head. <laughs> I hope that Excellent, helps, John. Thanks, That's about all. Thanks so much for that. I'm going to uh, sign off here uh, and listen to uh, your conversation with Norm Winsky. But let me just share this in passing. There's two things that I'm thinking about looking at with this British pound uh, that both argue for uh, my speculation of a rally to 135 to 145. Not right today, of course. Mm -hmm. but conceivably by year's end, maybe sometime in the next year. One is, and probably this is the most important, Larry, while you track and comment when you see very obvious major, major uh, signals coming from uh, open interest uh, as applied to the futures market, in addition to that, Larry, I look for major signals being given by the positioning in the futures market as reported by the uh, CFTC in their commitment of traders info. And the major signal we're getting is that the British pound is a screaming buy. And that's very different from what we're seeing in the Japanese yen or the, uh, the euro. So uh, it's telling uh, the signal being sent is hey, the British pound is just mm -hmm. too damn cheap. And the same mm -hmm. cannot be said for what that group of players thinks about the yen or the euro, but very specifically, pound sterling. So I just mm -hmm. share that with you. My, uh, my suspicion is 135 to 145, 
And as a trader, I'm going to be trading the long side. And thank you for uh, showing the pattern that gave us the setup this week to begin that process. Well, we'll see if it works, John. But uh, we certainly appreciate all the work that we're doing. And still, I haven't given up on the cotton. It, John, the only reason I got out of it is that it's the first time I've traded it in 40 years, and I had a $300 profit, and when it went to a $100 loss, I was so frustrated. Well, I wasn't really frustrated. I said, what the hell are you doing? You know, and so I just got out of it. I'll look at it again because I do like the pattern, but it was affecting my bond position. It was affecting my uh, position in the uh, British pound and also in the wheat, and, you know, we got – and the beans, you know, we were and corn, all those worked out really beautiful yesterday. There's a perfect example, you know, everybody's looking for a bearish report in wheat. What does it do? It rallies 25 cents. So, like you say, there's something gone going on over there, and the weather's getting really nasty across the the growing part of the country. So, this is going to be a real interesting year for sure. Uh, very hey, good, th Larry. Hey, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks uh, we'll in see advance you for uh, talking to Norm. You got it, brother. Take it easy. We'll be right back with Norm Winsky from Astro Trends. Larry Pesamento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're having a few technical difficulties getting Norm on the line. Something about the moon vibrations are not working very good over there in Naples, Florida today. 
but uh, we'll get him on in just a minute here. We'll see how the rest of it goes. I posted a chart. Hardly ever trade this one, but uh, we have some really good students over there in Zurich and also in Geneva and also in the little town of Zug, which is in the middle of the Alps that has palm trees right down the middle of the town. Ain't that amazing? But uh, you'll notice here on this uh, Swiss franc trade, and when you see that CHF, folks, that is uh, the Latin abbreviation for the Swiss uh, the Swiss currency. It's something Havelica, Francesca, whatever it is. It's all Latin over my pay grade, but that is the Swiss franc versus the U.S. dollar. The key here is you can see the 135 pattern, you know, with the lower tops. Those are ba basically the definition of a trend. You've got a lower tops, lower bottoms, and that tells you, you know, what you're looking at uh, when you're watching the trend here. So uh, keep that one uh, under your hat there. I don't trade it too often, but it's a good one to trade. They had that bad thing happen about four years ago where they came out and played uh, games with the euro and dropped it $18,000 in about 30 seconds, and then it ran back up and bankrupted a few of the smaller uh, Forex firms. But uh, that was the biggest bank robbery. No one even cared. Nobody goes to jail. Folks, if you're going to be a criminal, do with white do white collar stuff because you can steal a candy bar and go to jail for 25 years. You steal 25 million, you might only go to jail for 15. Let's take a quick look here at the Bitcoin this week. We've had a lot of action, and now the president is uh, tweeting about it, which will probably give it a little bit more action. And as you can see here, we'll be looking at the... Uh, 61% uh, retracement today. So far, that's held. You see the nice Gartley that we had up there at 13,200. We immediately dropped uh, 10, 13% uh, down to that 61% retracement, which is held so far. And actually, since this morning, it's actually rallied a little bit with the with the president out there tweeting that it's no good. There's enough people that want to that want to buy it that it still goes higher. So we'll pay sort of a close attention to that. Regarding the British pound, folks, the British pound has has that nice pattern in there. But, you know, if it fails, uh, you know, that's not going to be a very good. Uh, that's, let's just get this up here to show you what it looks like, because uh, if it fails here, all we've been able to do so far is to rally up to 125.80. We're trading 125.50 or so right now. But if we go back below that low now, you know, you're going to be taking out the lows from January. And uh, notice you took out the lows of January from December. What did it do? It rallied from 124.50 all the way up to 133.60. So maybe we'll get a rally like this again. That's what Mr. Z was you know, referring to, that it could easily do that because this is major support here on the long-term chart of the British pound. So um, this is a very interesting one to uh, keep an eye on. It's just a three-drive pattern. And uh, but those are the ones that, you know, give you several ratios to work on. And that's what you're trying to do is to line them up and then you'll be ready to go from here. So let's uh, remember that one, because below that 12440, you do not want to be in that. that. Well, you can be in it on the short side, but I certainly want to wouldn't want to mess with it uh, any other way. That's uh, the real key, you know, to look at. So those are just some of the things that we're looking at on these. We've also talked about those hogs. Uh, we really think we've got a chance here. We'll get these December hogs up and show you. Actually, I made a mistake here on the hogs, folks. We should be looking at uh, uh, October hogs. Um, the open interest in the August hogs is starting to drop, so they're moving their positions over into the October hogs. The December hogs has about 15% uh, of the open interest that we have in the uh, uh, in the in the October, so that's really the one to trade. It's okay if you're only buying one or two contracts in the December and you want to hold it for several months. It's certainly okay, but if you're going to be trading in and out of it, it'd probably be better to trade uh, trade the October. Uh, we haven't been in the hog market, you know, since uh, you know way back in April when we caught that bottom and we had the nice run up that I missed half of, but. You know, that's leaving money on the table, and that happens all the time, folks. Of those four things that we always worry about, leaving money on the table, fear of 
fear of losing, you know, fear of being wrong. I mean, oh boy, I got fear of missing out. All of those things are silly fears because that you, you're never gonna you're never gonna control those fears because you're not gonna get the high tick. You are gonna miss out. You know, those are just things that happen all the time. You shake it off and you know do the next thing. I got a question uh, last night, uh, and the guy said, you know, I've had a really nice run here. I made some really good money, and in the last four or five days. You know, I haven't haven't been able to you know to find my my hat to put on the on the hat rack. And I said, hey, welcome to trading. You know, come on, Bubba. You know, no one's going to be right all the time. You're going to have periods when you're very good, and you're going to have periods when you're you know you're you, you feel like you just can't find anything. I can remember sitting at this desk right here about 20, 25 years ago, and Mark Douglas was behind me, and I had had a run that just one of my best runs ever. I think I had had something like 31 days in a row without a losing trade. Oh, I had losing trades, but I was making money every day, and. Uh, I told Mark I had five trades set up. I had all my charts out, and I said, "Oh, Mark, I said this is going to be this is going to be the this is going to be the coup de gras here." He says, "This is going to be a great day." He puts his hand on my shoulder, and he said, "The streak ends today." And oh man, it just drained me. I mean, I just turned around. I said, "What?" The? I'm not going to say the words that I use, but you wouldn't use them in church. I said, "Why are you doing that to me?" He said, "No, Larry." He said, "I'm not doing it to you." He says, "It's the inflection in your voice." It's too much confidence. He said, I can hear it. He said, I know you well enough that I don't know if they're going to work or not, but there's a danger sign here. Folks, these patterns were as perfect as you could get, and they were 0 for 5. All five of them lost. And we went out and had a nice dinner and everything and laughed about it. And uh, sure enough, I uh, had a couple days in a row there where I couldn't find a winning trade. And so I took a day off and uh, then got back into the groove a few days later. But we go through these streaks all the time. And there's, you know, you've got to be prepared for them when they come. You know, that's amazing. When, when I worked at Commodity Corporation, they had a full time psychiatrist on the staff there. That uh, well, it's a psychologist, not a psychiatrist, and uh, you know they you literally had to go through these things. If you went through a divorce or had a death in a family, you had to go through therapy with these folks. And when you got ready to trade again, you had to wait. I think six yeah, it was six months after a death in the family. Six months if you had a divorce, you got paid during that time, but no trading. And then after your your peers would look over your shoulder to see if you were in fact doing it. That's one of the reasons why I left uh, Commodity Corp because I went through a divorce. I didn't want to go through all that psychological stuff, which I probably should have. I needed it more than anybody else. But anyway, it worked out okay. But anyway, remember, you, you didn't, you're never going to be perfect. You know, that's the whole thing. And you, if you get try to be right 50, 60 percent of the time, keep your losses relatively, uh, uh, you know, normal. I think you're going to be you're going to be just fine doing this. But there's no 100 uh, percent, folks. That's just not going to happen. And as uh, you know, the only thing 100% is death and taxes, and we all have to do those. So that's pretty much uh, what you look at. Focus on how much money you're going to lose, folks, not how much money you're going to win. That's old uh, Paul Tudor Jones. Remember the look at the slot machine. Never on that slot machine does it say you can never beat me for over a long period of time. I've taken in $1.2 million more than I've given out. And uh, this is the type of game that you're playing. You have control. You're the slot machine. 877-927-6648. Hopefully we'll get Mr. Wizard off the sea of tranquility and get him on the air here at the next break. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions daily, S&P 500, bull and bear, leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we've got an interesting situation here. We've got very, very bullish news about this hurricane, and we've got the crude oil heading towards Miami Beach. It's going south. It's not down very much, folks. It's down exactly a dollar a barrel from the high we made on the 11th. And let's just see if that is Mr. Winsky coming in from the Sea of Tranquility. Norm, are you there? Yes, sir, Larry. Okay, Norm, could you do us a favor today and focus on what you're looking at in the future? And then we're going to have you on at 3.30 uh, this afternoon and give you some extra time then. How does that sound? Okay. Uh, okay. Fire, you fire, do, Norm, let, Norm, let's do it this way. You do whatever you like. You're kind enough to be on the show. Take the mic and run with it, my friend. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, I was on your show last on June 27th. We were sitting right on uh, – let me just get some background – my two top, you know, I'm doing the planets. And my two top planetary uh, categories of planetary events are when a planet gets a zero latitude. That's as it goes around the sun. Not only do the planets go round and round, they go up and down. When they get to the midpoint there, or they're up and down, that's zero latitude. If they're going up, that's north latitude, zero north. If they're going down, zero south, okay? And we also have, from the point of view of the Earth, do the rolling motion of the Earth to the other planets, the planets up here, that's your operative word, at times to stop their motion and then reverse direction. I'm sure a lot of your folks have heard about Mercury turning retrograde, okay? So we'll be getting to that, actually, in, in just a minute. So uh, on the uh, uh, night of the 26th, morning of the 27th, when I, uh, about when I was on your show, we had Mercury zero south latitude. I had these all laid out in advance. I, I had these notes for your folks there. Back on the 27th, you could have written these down and possibly done some trades. We'll see how that worked out. And so I had these different markets associated with different planetary events. Uh, that one, Mercury Zero South, I, we had the the grains and stocks. And then we had something in the night of the, July 1. Well, that was uh, to the U.S. natal chart, which brings in U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and dollar. And then we had a solar eclipse the afternoon, late afternoon of July 2nd. And that was your, uh, you know, your anytime that's a new moon, a type of new moon. And so anytime you have that, you have your financials, grains, and precious metals. In this case, it was in the sign of cancer. So that emphasizes silver. And then let's look at after that night, the night of the 3rd, over the 4th, July the 4th holiday, uh, you had uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius lining up with the moon's north node of cancer. And that uh, says oats, silver, and stocks. 
Then we had Venus at zero north latitude on the night of the 3rd, or again, over the 4th of July uh, holiday. And then the weekend of the 5th, we had another big, huge cluster, which was the uh, the grains and stocks and your gold, and because it was a Leo, that was a double whammy for Mercury, because Mercury was both at perihelion and turning retrograde in the sign of Leo. So that brought in your grains, gold, OJ, and stocks. What's well, that? Pretty much uh, is the big, bigger picture. Let's go look at the charts. Here's your S and P. We had uh, one, two, three, four windows, and there you go. There's your first one right there on the 27th. We're real past, very close to the low, and just one day past the low there on the 27th. So you had a chance to buy it there, and we went up. Then there was a little pullback low there on the night of the first. And then we had a big cluster here for the 4th of July. And there you go, on the morning of the 5th. And then we had a secondary, that was, oh, that was the night of the 3rd, wait, the night of the 2nd, I'm sorry. Uh, for the solar eclipse, right, we made a little short-term top there. Then we went away for the 4th, we came back on the 5th, and we made a secondary top there on the opening, right on the 5th. So that worked out pretty well for the S&P. Here's the Bondolis, as you like to call them, Larry. I had two windows for the bonds, had just passed that low there for the first one, and we got really close to the top here on the second one. So that was good. Here's your dollar. We had the uh, two windows there for the dollar. We had that little short-term, I kind of did the opposite. Uh, the bonds made a little top there on the first one and made a very nice bottom there on the second one. Now we're going to go on to cattle. Our big moment in cattle was the... I believe the night of the uh, third, which we had Venus, Venus, cattle goes with Venus. And so there you go. You had a nice little short-term top there for a couple days for a little pullback correction. Here's your copper, also a Venus market. That made a little short-term top there on the night of the third. Here's your cotton. That made a nice little top there on the night of the third, another Venus market. Here's your gold, uh, top uh, very close to the solar eclipse we had on the on July 2nd. And then we went down and to our second window was over the weekend of the 5th uh, to make your, uh, uh, we were one day early there. It made a slightly lower low the next day. Here's your OJ. OJ nailed that uh, solar eclipse, nailed the bottom on the OJ. I know nobody trades it except for uh, Billy Ray and uh, Lewis there in, uh, on a Caribbean island. Uh, but there we go. And uh, there we go. And we have, uh, but we had a miss. So look, it's a red arrow, Larry. That's my indication that it didn't work. Uh, the problem here was not so much the daily, you know, the, we had the day, but if you sold the opening there, which was what it, it was implied, then you would have a, you would, it had a big move up and you could have gotten stopped out, you know, so I had to put a red arrow there for a miss. Here's your corn, and not so good on our first date there, the June 27th date, but the others worked out well. Here you go. There's the one day from the uh, low there on July. Oh, there's your right, one day for the uh, solar eclipse right there, and then we went up to the big cluster on the June July 5 weekend, and we had the big double Mercury deal, and that was uh, a nice short-term top there before the had about a three-day pullback. Here's the oats, same deal. Oats kind of didn't like June 27th window, but it did work out here or later when we had this solar eclipse and the big uh, cluster over the July 5 weekend. Then we went down, there, uh, there you go, there's your, uh, well, that was the uh, earlier one, solar eclipse, and we all we had a Jupiter thing for the, I think, the third. Then we went down to the July 5 weekend and, and made a little bit of a, a bottom there. Here's your beans. Beans did pretty nice. There you go. Came down for the June 27th. It did obey the June 27th Mercury point. Had a little bounce up. Then we came back down to the about the solar eclipse. Then we went kind of sideways. And we made the, the lower slow, though, was uh, uh, over the July 5 weekend when we had the big Mercury uh, a cluster, double cluster there, you know. And then we had wheat. Wheat did really nicely. We had the low on the... Uh, uh, July 1, and let's see, wait, 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 where did we go? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that was, yeah, and, oh, yeah, oh, I missed it. There's June 27th. That worked out well for the wheat. 
that was the, the highest high we've had in a while. Then we came down for the, uh, uh, there's the solar eclipse right there. That was a nice low. Then we popped up for our two windows there. And then the big cluster over the July 5 weekend was a little short-term top. So that's worked out pretty well. Here's sugar. Uh, we got uh, made a little short-term top there on my Venus point on the uh, night of the 3rd. And then we came back down, and you could have made some money there. Here's silver uh, for the eclipse. We had two uh, windows there for the right, right around the eclipse. And uh, we're doing okay. All right. We already have to pay a few bills. Could you stay with us till the end, Norm? Abso absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Norm, we've got a question from one of our listeners, and that is, what is the difference between a partial eclipse and a total eclipse? Uh, I don't think we have time to go into that. Have them call me, and I'll explain it, Earl. Or you can probably Google it. Okay, I think we're pretty short on time here, right? Aren't we, Larry? So, well, we've so got we've got I two apologize. full minutes. What's that? Go ahead. Okay, I apologize. Uh, I will, I'll help that person if they call me. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. The, we were looking at the silver chart, and you notice here's how we make money with this. The market rallied into the solar eclipse. That means you need to sell it, right? And there you go. We had two windows there, the afternoon of the second. 
and they opened it right around the third, and that turned out to be a very nice top, and then the silver kind of went off the cliff there, okay? So, okay, now we got, I got I want to show you what happened in June, my version of the Bradley model. I do something Bradley doesn't do, and uh, I forecast when it's going to flip upside down. And I'm, that's a big frustration for all the people following the Bradley model. These red arrows are my planetary polarity points. I predicted that the model would invert there and right there. And look, uh, it was pretty nice, right? Right there, for example, that's your Mercury Zero South Latitude, which I talked about just a little while ago. And look at that. The model, adding up the numbers, that mod, the blue line would have kept going straight down, but I flipped it up, and that's what the market did. You see that? So anyway, there we go. So now we're going to show you real some numbers. Since it's six months into the year, I thought I could show you uh, how we're, how it's, these, these signals are doing. For the first six months of the year, I've been averaging 74%. There's all the markets, 84% on the stocks. Now, you know, some uh, and not uh, 84. There's another 84 there for silver and 75 and so forth. So I think we're kind of short on time. We want to look ahead. All right, this weekend... We got Jupiter. Uh, we got some points coming up here, a, a window for this weekend. And let's see, we got uh, Taurus. We already looked at the cattle and the cotton. Here you go, cattle, copper, cotton, oats, and stocks. Those are the markets you want to watch for over the weekend here in the Monday's opening. Uh, the night of the 15th, that'll be Monday night. You got, uh, we're lining up here for the coffee, hogs, oats, stocks. And then we have the lunar eclipse on Tuesday night. Uh, for uh, and that'll be coffee, financials, grains, and precious metals. There's your cocoa chart, there's your coffee chart, there's your hog chart, and here's my contact information. I got free classes coming up the last week of July. 